From a Hulu perspective, what we found is that most of the reasons and motivations for viewing on Hulu has to do with choice and control and convenience. Um, we see now 75% of our viewing is happening on living room connected devices, so on a television screen as opposed to a desktop or a mobile or tablet. Um, and so they're watching television on a television screen, but they can do so with a lot more control and choice than they can with regular linear TV. They can watch what they want, when they want, and we have a very broad array of, of selection of programming for them to choose from. Um, and so we find that that's really what's motivating them to watch. They watch for a lot of different reasons. It's either catching up with shows that they hadn't seen before so that they can continue to watch on linear television. Uh, we obviously have our originals, which are viewed by a large portion of the audience. Um, and those are most often released week to week. We have a lot of people who like to binge view so they can show up and watch a lot of series that we have full episodes, full seasons of. Um, and they can watch them all in one sitting or multiple episodes at a time. We see a lot of that. That seems to be a big, a big preference as well. Um, so what's really great about Hulu is that it, you know, it serves all those needs and consumers have a lot of different reasons for having gotten the service in the first place. Um, but for the most part, what it allows them to do is control their viewing experience. How do you balance the content that you provide for binging versus just normal programming? Well, our, we really only control it for um, our originals, and we do have a week-to-week -week release model for the most part with those originals, but we've experimented. We released a show uh, this past December with all of the episodes available at one time, and I think we'll continue to experiment with that. Um, obviously, our owners and media partners, because we have last night's TV, those are also released on a week-to-week -week basis, but you can also just wait, same thing with our originals, until all the shows are available and watch them in that way. And what we found is that really serves the needs of all the viewers we have out there. Um, you know, because they are big TV fans, they watch a lot of television, whether it's on Hulu or elsewhere. And, um, you know, we know that they're fans of regular, regularly scheduled TV, and this allows them to either catch up, to watch it there, or to wait and for a full season to be available and binge everything at once. You know, the, the term peak TV was coined uh, by FX earlier this year that there's just so much television uh, that people almost have to have a cue of what they want to watch. Um, and we sort of enable that to happen by having such a broad library um, of a lot of television, movies as well, but we have a lot of TV, uh, which allows them to watch in any way that they, that they want. What shifts have you seen in consumption, consumption behavior or viewing preferences over the last few years? So I just showed this in this presentation, but I think the most prominent shift has been for television viewing to go back to a TV set. When Hulu launched back in 2008 or 7, um, it was really a desktop medium and you know all the broadcast networks also had the ability to watch full episode content on PCs and, and laptops. Um, and that changed really quickly as technology became readily available to connect to a television screen. In between there, you know, the tablet came out and mobile devices got better and became more video viewing platforms. Um, but really, connected devices, connected game consoles, connected smart TVs, all sort of really changed the game in terms of making it much easier for consumers to access television content on their television screen, which is really the best screen available to them in the best room in the house, and that's really probably the most pronounced shift that we've seen. And we sort of feel like our viewers were kind of at the leading edge of that trend um, because of the content that we have and their desire to watch it on that screen. So what can you tell us about the relationship between linear TV watchers and the ads they see versus the same relationship between OTT viewers and ads that they see? Well, I mean, we have a limited ad load, and um, we also only charge an advertiser when they've seen 100% of the ad, which is different than really almost every other video model out there. Um, and what that provides is great ad effectiveness. We've done a ton of studies um, across a ton of different campaigns that demonstrate that Recall, awareness, intent are all higher on Hulu than on linear platforms. Um, and that really has a lot to do with the attention that's paid because of a smaller ad load um, and the fact that we don't charge anybody unless the entire ad is seen. Um, so that's really a, a benefit there. What have you seen about the uh, ad lengths, the relationship between ad lengths and viewer engagement? Um, not much. I mean, again, because the pods themselves are smaller, are shorter, um, we you know, people just, and, and we tell them how long they are and how many they have to sit through, and I think that's a, that's a nice feature. We get that a lot, that people are like, I love the countdown. They know that they have, you know, a couple ads to sit through or a certain amount of time to sit through, um, and they tend to therefore stay engaged in it and be less distracted or less likely to leave the room. So the amount of time, you know, we see the ads are, um, you know, are sort of effective across the board, 
Um, we haven't really seen any major differences in that. We um, are platform agnostic when we sell video. We really, when an advertiser buys with us, they buy across all platforms. And the measurement is the same for us because it's an ad served to a, to a screen. Um, our biggest priority right now is measuring audiences because we know that there's a tremendous amount of co-viewing that happens on a television set, which is different than historically watching on a PC or a mobile phone. You're less likely to have a family gathering around, you know, a, a, an iPad. Um, but for living room devices, we know that there are more people sitting in the room and right now we really only measure the, the, the screen. Um, so we're working with Nielsen, we announced this last year in our upfront to come up with um, a, what they call digital ad ratings, DAR, uh, solution for living room and that's all underway and we, we have made a lot of progress and we will probably see more from us on that in the next coming weeks. So the upfronts are not far away. Um, how will they be materially different for Hulu if they will be versus last year? I mean, I think this audience measurement will have an impact um, because it's a different way than, than we've sold before. Um, I think we have a lot of momentum around some really great originals, and we saw that last year. There was a, you know, we had a, I had just started at the, the upfront there, and it was the largest attended that we ever had at the actual event. Um, and, you know, I think that people sort of understand the value proposition, and we live in a really nice place where we're sort of television and also digital where you get all the um, you know people sort of understand what the content is it's it's a clean well-lit environment with sight sound and motion uh, but we also have all the data capabilities you know far ahead of you know many of the linear television companies um, that that come along with digital and um, you know it's 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 it makes a nice marriage of having First party data, that gives us a lot of really robust information about how our subscribers watch, but we also know the importance of having third party audience verification, and I think that's part of what a lot of what we'll talk about in the upfront.